and welcome back to Dapplog. You caught me in the middle of hacking into various government mainframes, taking down their firewalls, bypassing any security questions and passwords. It sure is tricky, but somebody's got to do it. Ah, I have finished. Finally. I've got it. Episode 12 of Season 6 of My Little Pony. And welcome back to Devlog. In the last part I went over level design and making, and in this part I go over the new sprint mechanic and running mechanic and climbing mechanic. The first question may be why add these features? The climbing is a little bit obvious, it's just a more detailed and reliable version of the wall slide system, so adding climbing made more sense to have that as a system, but the sprinting may be a bit confusing as to why I added that. The game's already fast enough and you're already going to wanting to be moving as fast as possible, so why add a sprint system? It seems counterintuitive to the game's design. Shut up, shut up, that's why I shut up, don't question me, I'm shut up, I do what I want. The reason I wanted to add a sprint mechanic and a running mechanic, they're the same thing, is because I needed to have the player have some level of control over how they are moving and how fast they are moving. The way I used to do this before was use the magnitude of the input access, as in how hard of a degree you're pressing the stick in the movement of direction, so if you press it lightly you will move slowly. The issue with this is for a, for a platformer, we are going to be moving very quickly, and also a platformer in general, you're generally going to be pushing the stick in the maximum direction of the axis most of the time, so there really wasn't an instance where the player had a subtle input press on the joystick, it was a very hard all the way to the extreme degree the joystick, or not at all. So adding a run mechanic has the player, they can still do this, they can still only lightly press the joystick, but now they can also enable a sprint to either walk or sprint. So the player can be running or they can be at a, at a normal walking speed. The trade-off for this, because there, all, there always must be details as to why a player may make any input in my game, is that there is a pro and a con to using the run function. The run function, which also moves a lot faster than the base game run speed used to be, so the game now moves quicker, is that the, move fun the run function has less control and less in-air control when composed to the walking amount. So if the player is running and they go into the mid-air and they're still wanting to run, then they're going to be moving in a less controlled manner, and this can make the game a lot more difficult for the player who is running. However, if you were to stop running at certain points, at certain key points and levels, you'll have an easier time controlling your speed, and an easier time controlling the player in air. And this means the optimal way to play is to hold the run input to run as much as you possibly can to move quickly, but then strategically letting go of the run input at certain points to have it so your character isn't always running or always moving incredibly quickly because that can make certain aspects or certain points of the game more difficult because of the way the player is moving so quickly. This has now made gaining speed and going very quickly in the game easier but also harder to perform. You can build speed a lot easier because of this input, at the same time now moving at a high speed is harder for the game, which is a lot of what the design for the game is based upon. The way the run input works is very simply, if the player is not holding the run input, which is either left shift or right mouse button or right trigger, please play my game on a joystick, please use the right trigger, the player will be set at a walking speed and be limited to this walking speed. If the player is running, holding this input, they will be able to use the other speed systems. That's how my game works with speed, there's different speed states. Watch an earlier devlog. The player can access these latest speed states of their movement system and move a lot faster. And then when the player is in midair, if they're using the sprint input, they will have a lot less control and they won't lose speed in air as much unless they're trying to turn around, but even then they will have a harder time doing so. Or if the player is walking or not holding the run input in air, they can actually slow themselves down in midair and they can move a lot slower in midair as well. This gives the player an opportunity to actually lose speed in air and lose some of their momentum in midair, which 
doesn't make sense logically, but does mean the player has some level of control in midair, which makes the game move better, I feel. Now let's talk about why I added the climbing system. The climbing system is generally just a more detailed setup for the wall slide system. The issue I had with the wall slide system is that I made some aspects of the level being that you had to continuously jump up the same wall or jump left and right from wall to wall, where your vertical height on the wall was something you had to jump up the wall to gain and it was a bit fiddly and not very satisfying for the player to do so i overhauled this system the wall slide is still there but now if you're holding the run input when you hit a wall the player will instead grab onto the wall and begin climbing onto it this gives the player more control of their movements and gives me game developer more options to torment the player with difficult movement capabilities that they will have to perform as in, they will have to now climb over walls and deal with hazards in that way. How does this work, you may be asking. The exact same way as the wall slide system. Only the player can now control the vertical height, so the player can even move up or down on the wall. The way this works, because I have changed it slightly, is that the player detects the wall in front of them, they will then rotate the wall's normal amount, although the wall is to the right of the player, so we rotate the wall's normal amount based on the fact that the normal amount is to the right of the player, so we rotate to what relative down would be. And this is just doing an angle scripting to test how angular the wall is. And then if the wall is to the left or right of the player, I can calculate an upwards direction of the player based on that. Once we've rotated to the wall, we will either move up or down on the wall's track. This is the wall's actual normal direction, so either up or down relative to the wall's normal direction, based on if our gravity amount in the movement script is either positive or negative. And then the speed of our movement up and down the wall is either positive or negative based on the amount of the gravity amount. This amount is then leapt to, if we're climbing, if we're holding up, it will leap to a positive amount. If we're holding down, it will leap to a negative amount, the same way that the player will build or lose speed. If the player is upside down on a wall and they let go of the climbing input, they will then fall off the wall. If the player is climbing up the wall and they get to a stable amount of ground, the player will be set on the wall. And by being set on the wall, I mean they will stand on the top of the wall. Basically, the player just moves up and down the wall in the exact same way they would move left or right on the ground. I then overhauled the vault system. What's the vault system, you may ask? Who cares? The vault system used to be a system where the player could grab onto ledges and then vault up or down them. That system is completely removed because the wall climbing invalidates this because you can just grab onto and hold onto any wall. And the vaulting up to ledges is boring and unsatisfying and took too long, so I just replaced this with a jump system. Now if the player was in a situation where they could vault up a ledge, the player will then stay in animation where they are vaulting, but they are just jumping over this ledge. All this does is I set the player to the ledge, I have them jump up and over the ledge, based on their speed. So the player is climbing, the speed will go higher, because the player already has momentum from climbing. If the player is not climbing, this will just be set to a default speed, and then the player will be shot upwards in a jump animation, jumping over this ledge. The player will then either go forward a small amount, so they are set onto wherever the ledge will be, or if the player is having speed added to their character, they will go a lot further. Basically, I'm just having the player be given speed and then lose a bit of control, so the player will automatically move forward and land on whatever ledge they are, so they're not just going upwards and then falling down the wall, which they had just vaulted over, they're going upwards and then automatically moving forward so they will land on the ledge. The reason I removed the ledge vaulting was because it's slow, and this option means the player is moving quickly, they are already moving in midair, so they can make other inputs. For example, in this setup, if the player is vaulting, they're already in midair, they're already moving, so the player, if they wanted to, could instantly dash or instantly double jump while still in this movement state. It means the gameplay is more snappy, and faster paced, and more fun. Finally, let's talk about animations. Oh boy, I really enjoy these ones. The climbing animations, I think, look incredibly silly in the best possible way. I really love how they look as the player either climbing up or down the wall. They look goofy and fun. 
I really tried to capture the impression of the player actually gripping onto the wall and kicking it with their feet to give more feedback to the fact that the player is actually climbing up this wall. I think the animations for going up and down the wall turn out very nicely. I also have animations for idling on the wall. This is if we are holding onto the wall and not actually moving. The player just kind of sits there on the wall, grabbing onto it, not doing anything. It's a pretty standard animation. Finally, we had the vault animation. The player pulls up the wall and vaults over it. I don't remember what this animation looks like, but it's a, quite, it's a very quick animation played in game, just to give the impression of the player actually vaulting over the wall and then having more vertical movement based on it. If I remember correctly, I like this animation a whole lot. I just don't remember what it looks like. But I think it's pretty good. Look at those leg kicks that Pep Pal makes. Boy howdy, she sure is quick. I love her so much. And that's it for devlog. I think the system really makes levels control and feel a lot better. It makes the player controls also feel a lot better to perform. It's generally pretty good. It was incredibly easy to add because the wall climbing system is so dependent on the wall slide system, it basically works the exact same way, so any issues that would arise from creating a climbing system would have already arose from creating the wall slide system, so realistically there's no real issue. There's a couple of weird hitboxes if you try to climb up them, they will have a couple issues, but those can be easily fixed by changing the hitboxes or just changing the way the climbing system works, and it is realistically a non-issue. Unless the player is deliberately climb trying to climb over every single object in a level in order to look for, for weird collisions, then these aren't really going to be apparent in gameplay. The only issue I had to correct is because now the player can infinitely climb up spaces, they could easily get up to areas that are blocked off in levels, or areas that I wouldn't want the player to see because they got lazy with texturing or something like that. So I had to go through some of my levels and correct some of these areas that the player could conceivably climb up to, so the player can't actually see any of these places where sprite systems just trail off into nothing. Luckily all those things are fixed. In the next devlog I talk about backgrounds and parallax scrolling systems.